Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, the Chester Euro Question Bank, search, find and reuse questionnaire items from social scientific research. First of all, uh, we would like to introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Esra Aktenis and I work at the Data Archive at GESES, Leibniz Institute for the Social Sciences in Germany. And I'm the project manager of the Chester Euro Question Bank project and I'm mainly responsible for the metadata, the content and the communication with our service providers. Yeah, hello, my name is Thomas Kremer. I'm a colleague from ESRA at GESES in Cologne uh, and I joined the EQB project in September and my responsibilities within others are the user interface and uh, partly the indexing of the metadata. Thank you. Before we start, uh, I would like you to know that you are currently uh, all muted, but you can post questions uh, to the chat box at any time and we'll be answering questions at the end of the session. Um, and if we don't get to your question during today's webinar, we will follow up with you afterwards. And today's uh, web webinar will be available after the live session. If you're interested in providing it to your colleagues, uh, you will be notified via email when and where the slides and the recording are available. So let's get started. This webinar is uh, divided into five parts. In the first part, we will give a brief overview of the Chester EQB project and will introduce the idea behind a European-wide question bank. In the second part, the current user interface will be presented. We will demonstrate how the Euro question bank helps users to find, compare and download questions, as well as question-related and study-related information. In the third part of the webinar, um, we will uh, present the EQB architecture and the purpose of the components. And we will also introduce the requirements for metadata providers and developers who are interested in supplying their metadata to EQB. In the fourth section, we will briefly summarize everything you need to know. And uh, we will end our webinar with answering your questions. So, first of all, I would like to introduce the project. The Chester Euro Question Bank project started in 2016 and is funded by Chester. Chester stands for Consortium of European Social Science Data Archives. It is an alliance of social science data archives of currently 20 member countries. And in the EQB project, we are currently 10 Chester service providers working on EQB. And GESES has the lead of the project and we are responsible for the project management and for the technical development of EQB. So Chester creates and runs services for the social sciences and one of them is the Euro Question Bank, which is uh, currently under development. So why is it necessary to develop a European-wide question bank and what are the benefits of it? As some of you might know, existing question data banks for social sciences mainly uh, operate on the national level, meaning that they only include questions from surveys that uh, have been conducted within their own countries. The disadvantage of this is that this limits the pool of available questions for users. The Euro Question Bank will be a solution that has been envisioned for many years, but was never implemented so far. It will link existing question data banks and will offer a single point of entry for survey questions from many service providers. So EQB will be a cross-national question bank with a central search facility across many Chester survey holdings and hopefully beyond. So users will have access to many questions, question-related information and study information within one application from several Euro European countries. So now I will introduce this application and will show how users can use this application to search, compare and download questions. 
Here you see the first page of the current prototype. So EQV is a search engine that will enable users to search survey questions together with study related information and documentation. So let's start with the search. This is the result page which you get when you type in a term into the search box. Following use case, I'm a researcher and I would like to design a questionnaire on the topic employment. And I'm not sure how I should formulate my questions. But I know that the term job should appear in the question text. So I click, so I type in job and start the search. Before I look into my results, I can narrow my search term by question text, response categories, study titles, and pre and post question text. So here the system browses the term job in all available question texts and all questions containing the term job in the metadata will be displayed. In addition, the search can be supported by filters meaning the search can be narrowed down by series, collection year, country, language and mode of collection. So the filters will help you to search more precisely and to refine your search query. For example, you search for the term job and tick question texts and select the country filter for Sweden. This will display questions containing the word job in the question text for data collected in Sweden. After setting filters, you will see all available questions and some additional information for each question. A detailed question view, the response categories, the study in which the question appeared and a drop down to select different language versions. So the user can switch between different language translations of a question by selecting a language. The user can also view the response categories of the question. And the user can see more question related information by clicking on detailed question view. This is what you get if you click on detailed question view. The question overview. This view contains more specific information about the selected question. So when you look on the left side, you will see the full question text from the result list. In addition, the question ID, number and version will be displayed. And here the question item also has an interview instruction and variable information. In addition to the question you have selected, you will find on the right hand side a list of other questions belonging to the same study. So here you will find all other questions in addition to the one you have chosen that belong, as you can see here, to the European Value Study 2008. You can also enter a search term uh, to the search within this particular list of questions. For example, I want to know what other questions with the term job appear in this particular study. So I type in the term job in the search field and select one of the displayed questions. And you will see the new selected question together with, with its details on the left hand side. And you can also display different question translations here as well. For each question, there will also be the study number and study title displayed. So here it says that this question appeared in the European Value Study in 2008. When you click on this link, you will also see the following information. The study description. A page with some study related information like study title, persistent ID, current version, if it's part of a study group, a link to the publisher, publication date, interview language, country, chapter topics, description and some information on methodology. 
We will also provide citation information on the right hand side, information on the metadata provider and to link to the Chester data catalog where further study related information and the data if available can be accessed. In addition, the user can access documents belonging to the study on the top right hand side where it says download documentation. So here you see all documents that are related to the study. So I decided to save and view a PDF file on weights. So you can download the documents directly as displayed here, or you can select them into your basket to download them later. So I've selected the document about weights and the document about variable report into my basket to download them later. On the top right hand side, you can see the number of all selected items that you would like to download. In addition to the documents, you can also download questions and related information by clicking on the download button. If you want to compare your questions first, you can use the button compare to select the questions you want to display side by side. You select those questions by clicking on compare. And as you can see, I have selected five questions to comparison and I've already saved four questions into my basket to download. So before I show you the basket, I would like to show you how you can compare your questions. The comparison view, so if you click on the icon on the right, you can see the following view. So if you're not sure which questions you would like to download, you can select them into your comparison view and see three questions at a time side by side. So the set of questions you have selected in the result list is listed here. You can also switch to other questions you have selected earlier and compare them as well. And you can also put the question into your basket to download it. The only view that is left and that I haven't showed you yet is the basket. So I selected four questions and I saved them into the basket. I can export all, item all items now as a zip file by clicking on download basket. And that's the last view I wanted to show you regarding the user interface. Um, now uh, I would like to hand over to Thomas. He's going to present the EQB architecture and requirements for a metadata provider who are interested in providing us their metadata. Yes, uh, thank you, Ezra. So um, yeah, let's start with uh, a brief architecture overview of the internal system. So the EQB consists of uh, the EQB front end and several back end components. At the top of this slide, you can see um, several archives in Europe that are the metadata providers. The service providers supply the metadata via the OAI protocol for metadata harvesting, or optionally, a file-based storage endpoint. The harvester component collects metadata files from the different endpoints of the service providers. The DDI FlatDB is then used to handle different versions of DDI files by splitting it up into uh, segments uh, of the study or the question related metadata. Um, currently, we support several versions of DDI, such as 3.1 and 3.2, and others in the future. The third component is the index. We use Elasticsearch to um, index the metadata in a unified, more uniform way so that we can handle the different DDI formats and uh, present these metadata in a search UI and make it searchable. This search UI is programmed in Java and using the Vardin framework as a user interface technology to display and browse and filter the collected metadata. So 
the next slide, please, Ezra. Um, yeah, so a short note on uh, the focus of the EQB. As you can see in this slide, the question entity or the question uh, is the content that is uh, in the focus of the whole EQB. Um, it stands in the center and the most important metadata that uh, are collected from the SP and provided to the users are the questions. Um, also, we provide information on the response domains, the instruments or the study the question is contained in, uh, if it is provided by the service providers. Also, information on the data sets, the variables, documents, other metadata and persons and institution affiliation. But however, the focus of the EQB model is um, our metadata schema starts therefore with information on the question level and uh, also the number of provided information in the entire EQB is the highest on questions and question related information. Uh, to the next one, please. Uh, here you see uh, a brief overview of the mandatory fields and some of the recommended fields. So the mandatory elements that must be provided by service providers are the question itself, uh, represented by a text and an ID, the study title that this question belongs to, the URL and the name of the service provider and the publication year of the study. Um, please bear in mind that we only uh, index fielded questions, means questions that have been run in a real study in the field. Therefore, the publication year is also mandatory. There are more properties. There are also recommended properties as well as technically optional, but strongly recommended to enhance that metadata that uh, can be found with the EQB. Um, so you see on the right side, some of them such as the study persistent ID, the time method, the country, the sample procedure, the mode of collection or the data collection date. Uh, of course, we can provide you with the entire EQB metadata schema um, if you're interested. Yeah. Um, so here you see an excerpt of the metadata schema. Um, it's an essential condition to access the display metadata accurately from all service providers. It's the standardized way and the overall structure of the EQB model. The schema includes all relevant metadata elements with a specific category of information. It represents the SESTA metadata model and covers the requirements for the EQB and it is compatible with the DDI lifecycle metadata standard. In the schema, you will find which metadata properties are mandatory, recommended or optional, and also which of the elements are multilingual because EQB supports multilingual metadata. The metadata can be provided in any language compliant with uh, the ISO 6391 standard. And we also have controlled vocabularies included, for example, for the mode of collection or the sampling procedure, or we also use the topic classification from the system. Okay, I think that's it architecture and requirements parts, Ezra. All right, thank you, Thomas. Um, now, um, now uh, I would like to uh, like to provide you a brief summary of the most important information on EQB. First of all, regarding the usage of EQB. So now you heard a lot about the user interface. So if you want to browse, discover and compare survey questions and question related information in a cross national question bank from several Chester service providers and beyond. If you want to access study related information and documentation and if you want to compare questions and question related information and export survey items 
then EQB might be the right tool for you. So if you are, for instance, a questionnaire designer and you would like to find high quality tested questions, then you can use um, that you can use for your questionnaire. Or if you are a researcher and you would like to find questions on a particular topic that is relevant for your research, or if you are a questionnaire translator and you would like to find translations of questions to get, for example, a sense of how translators um, handled a particular difficult translation issue for particular questions, or if you are a survey methodologist and you would like to see how questions on a topic change over time and you uh, would like to explore um, issues on question design, then all of these reasons and more um, than EQB might be the right tool for you. So, um, but if you are a service provider and you want that all of these target groups uh, I just mentioned reuse all your metadata and data and you have the willingness and the interest in making your survey questions ex accessible in EQB, then uh, first of all we would like to invite you to get in touch with us so that we can provide you with more information on the requirements and can discuss how we can make your metadata available. Secondly, document your metadata in DDI. Um, we prefer DDI lifecycle and we can support you with this and can provide you example XML files in DDI from other service providers so that you can see how the metadata should be documented. Um, third, please improve your metadata documentation, especially on question level, uh, so that um, we are able to, um, to, harvest your, uh, to harvest your metadata. So um, we need you to look at the mandatory fields of EQB. And last, make your metadata available, preferred are OAI endpoints. So now you know what the requirements are. So my question to the participants here in this webinar is the social science data archive or at an institute who have question related metadata available, do you want to be part of EQB? Then please feel free to contact us. This is our last slide before we start our question and answer session. So what is next in EQB? So next year we plan to launch our application because it's still work in progress. We plan to expand the coverage from our Chester service providers and metadata suppliers also outside of Chester. And we will conduct user tests and we'll relaunch EQB version 2. So that's it from our side. Uh, this is all the information we would like to give you for now and I hope um, you got a first insight into the usage and requirements of the Chester Euro Question Bank. So um, what is left is the last part um, of the webinar, the question and answer session, where you have the opportunity to ask questions by typing them in into the chat box. Um, let me see if there are already some questions. Um, yes, I can see a question, but maybe I can start first with the questions that we received beforehand. So um, someone from NSD asked, um, I think we have, um, uh, I would like to know how the EQB can be accessed how I can promote it and how I can help researchers access it. So uh, we answered how you can use it. Um, and uh, regarding the access of EQB, this might be a question from several participants. Well, it is still a beta version. So um, for now, we will not provide you a link yet because currently we are intensely working on the application. And it can be unavailable at any time, so it's still uh, in work in progress. 
but we will announce when we will have a stable and productive application available. So if you want to get notified about our launch, feel free to contact us. Uh, the second question uh, is, um, I'm interested in connection between Chester members databases and the EQB. What are the metadata variables available? The answer is, um, as you heard, we harvest Chester's members metadata via OAE endpoints, um, but we will also offer a file storage based solution for those who cannot provide this preferred format. And the second part of the question, uh, we are a question bank, so we only have a few metadata on variables like variable name, label of the variable, description of the variable, and also variable type. So if you are asking if we provide the actual data, then the answer is no. The actual data cannot be accessed uh, within EQB, but we will provide uh, a link to the Chester data catalog, uh, or we already do that, and the Chester service providers or other service providers study description where additional metadata on study level and the data set, if they are available, can be found. So now we would like to answer um, more questions. Let me see if I... Uh, here it says, Hi, it's Domingo from Unidata, Italy. Is DDI 2.5 supported in some way or DDI 3? Uh, DDI 3, I cannot read the last part of the question. DDI 3 only. Ah, DDI 3 only. Okay. Um, well, currently we have service providers who only have DDI codebook. So um, we support DDI codebook for, for service providers who are part of EQB for now. But for next year, um, we will um, ask you to provide, uh, you can provide us DDI codebook uh, metadata, but um, in the way we need them. So, um, as you know, everyone around the world understands DDI differently, have different interpretations of DDI and how the metadata is documented within DDI. And uh, this was quite a challenge or still a challenge to read uh, all flavors of DDI interpretations and groupings. So, for next year, um, there will be the possibility to um, to use a validator tool where you can see what uh, DDI profiles EQB has, and then you can check if you meet the requirements. <clears throat> Do you want to add something, Thomas, or should I, I go to the next question? Perfectly. What what is the status? Yeah. Um, maybe we start uh, first come first serve. There okay, was a uh, question I have, from I am. Mm -hmm. yeah from uh, Janis Stebe. Um, it is a function to find similar question based on the one selected. So there is currently no um, control or no widget that does exactly that that uh, proposes the five most similar questions to the one you have selected, but as it's a search engine, um, there's anyways a similarity measure uh, used to rank the results by the score uh, according to the criteria you selected. So what you could of course do is you could uh, paste the entire question with just the relevant keywords in the search uh, search box and you would then see the questions that best match that field. Um, and then maybe also related a little bit to the question that uh, Adrian Dusa asked um, regarding the compatibility in different languages. So 
I think one great advantage of the EQB is that we use the tester topic classification, which means that by using the filter of the topic classification, regardless of the language that is used in a concrete question, for example, if we have one in Slovenian and one in French and the other one in Danish, even if there is no concrete string matching in the question text itself, you can use the filters which are, let's say, language independent as the filters are uh, in, in English, or at least they are mapped, which uh, is the benefit of a controlled vocabulary. And therefore you can filter down and drill down to the set of questions that um, cover the topics that you're interested in. Um, yeah, I would say uh, that's what we can see now for the first two questions. Or Ezra, would you like to add something on that? No, um, I have problems seeing the whole question text. I don't know if you can read out the questions. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. Um, Maybe, I think yeah. we answered the first three questions. The fourth one I see, hello, this is Laura Morales. Um, we will be collaborating with GESIS and EQB for the inclusion of question metadata from surveys on migrants and ethnic minorities. Minorities were interested in several aspects and from there I cannot okay. see. Okay, so aspect one, will there be enough metadata variables to describe the questions before and after? Whether there were any instrumentation experiments, etc. So still all metadata at the level of the question and questionnaire position, but richer than just question text answer variables. Um, so this, the question carries, goes on. Um, I would stop here and answer the first part of your question. Uh, I think yes. So we would definitely provide you, Laura, with the CMM metadata schema, um, maybe also with a, with a, a brief introduction to the DDI 3.2 so that you can see how feature rich the metadata schema is and especially as you mentioned these uh, pre and post question text so this is something which is definitely there and you can also limit your search to just those texts so uh, I would give uh, a cautious yes to uh, this question as an answer um, and to go more into detail, I think it's good that we have a look at the SESTA metadata model, uh, maybe together, or we just provide it to you, and maybe it's clear already then. If not, uh, we can, of course, get in touch. Then the second part of your question, how will you work around the likely multiplication of questions that are identical but have been asked multiple surveys across several countries and service providers? For example, if all the SESTA archives have the questions relating to the European Social Survey for each of these, the same questions will be multiplied by the other nation, I think it's N, um, by N or <laughs> by, <laughs> by factor N. How will this be worked out so that identical questions are only listed once and then the information provides the list of all the surveys in which it was included in which Okay, Ezra, mm -hmm. do you have do I have an, an answer to that question? Excuse me. Do you have an answer to that question? So, how do we address the issue that we are in? We are currently listing fielded questions, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there is, of course, the yeah. It's it's very likely and obvious that uh, very soon we will have questions that are similar if not identical in the wording but they uh -huh. have uh, been fielded in two or more different uh, situations uh, so laura's question is how uh, are we able to identify uh -huh. all those identical questions um that's a good question but for sure we will display all questions even if there are appeared in different studies from uh, or appeared in the same study and are um, provided by several service providers. So, um, so every question has its own ID, if I understand the question right. So you want to know how, how the questions will be um, identified. So there are question IDs to identify them. 
<clears throat> um, yeah, so I, I'm not sure whether it's the question IDs or really the questions that stem from the same instrument. Uh, I think that's, that's um, um, what the question is targeting at. Uh, correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, uh, Laura. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um yeah, but maybe we can um yeah, may maybe we can get back to you uh, Laura uh and we'll provide you a more detailed answer to this. So may maybe that's a good solution um to to provide you an answer afterwards. Yeah. Is there any more parts of the questions that I missed? Or should we go to the next one? Next question was from Bodil uh, Agasosa. What time methods are there in the implementation? Um, yeah, the time methods are, is a controlled vocabulary um, from the DDI, so from the DDI Alliance. This is a controlled vocabulary from the DDI. Um, Next one. I think these are the replies from Laura to our answer of. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, are there any more questions that I cannot see? I, I don't know why this view shows only one line. But I hope we didn't miss a question. No, I, I can. I have the question window maximized, and that's uh, all the questions that. Uh, okay. So far. Um, yeah, maybe we. Um, um, yeah, well, we definitely want to invite uh, you to participate uh, in the Euro Question Bank, particularly if you are uh, a potential service provider and you have interest in increasing the visibility of your fielded questionnaires. I think the EQB provides an excellent uh, opportunity to um, increase the scope and the visibility of your questionnaires. Yes. Um, and if you have any more questions um, that come to you later, feel free to contact us as well. So I think uh, we came to the end of our webinar. Um, so thank you all for joining and uh, thank you for your interest. Uh, it was a pleasure to us introducing our project. Um, so if you have any questions uh, remaining, as I said, feel free to contact us uh, and let us know if your institution is interested in joining EQB. So. Goodbye and thank you. Thank you. This video is produced by the Consortium of European Social Science Data Archives. For more information on CESTA, please visit www.cesta.eu.